It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. We have a great podcast for you today. We have a message for all you savers out there who've done a great job building your nest egg. We're going to tell you all the do's and don'ts of what to do with your nest egg now so you don't screw it up. We're going to talk about our market crash survival kit. We're in the 11th year of an economic expansion and big booming bull market. Are you prepared if the market goes down? Bob and I are going to give you our playbook for how to protect yourself. And we have this week's spotlight. We have our colleague, financial advisor, Jen Financial Angel on the show. She's going to walk you through a real retirement case she worked on, talk about how she helped a couple get on their path to financial freedom so you can make the right moves and not make the same mistakes with your own planning and investing. Check it out. Let's say you've done a really good job saving over the years. You've kept yourself out of debt and your investments have done a really good job. Now you're getting close to retirement, or maybe you're in retirement. I thought, Bob, we could discuss for our listeners some of the do's and don'ts of how they can protect and grow their hard-earned wealth. And I think one of the big things that we see as a don't is sitting on too much cash. Yeah, right. You know, I think that is the big fear that the day you retire, the economy implodes and you have a market crash like we had in 2008. And all of a sudden, you got to go back to work. Yes. Yes. I mean, that is why I think you've seen, you know, I think in our practice, we see a lot of people come in the door every single week and we do these full financial master plans. And the biggest thing we see is you're sitting with way too much cash earning nothing. Yeah, because that's the thing. If you look at your portfolio right now, you're not going to retire and spend it all in the first year. So how much do you need in cash, right? Bob, the short answer is probably a lot less than you have on hand. You know, we always say our rule of thumb is six to 12 months worth of expenses is good to have in cash. But once you get above and beyond that, you're really putting yourself at risk, especially right now, because inflation's going up. Cost of living is a big deal when you're retired. You've got to figure out a way to keep up with that cost of living. Yeah, so true, Ryan. That's the problem with cash right now is you may be getting one and a half percent, maybe one percent in your money market fund, or if the bank even pays you anything. But net of inflation, your money's going backwards. You are in a negative yield investment right now, unless you have a yield over 2%. That's right. And you got to remember, you got to pay taxes on those investments too. So you have to factor out what your return is after tax, because that's what's really key here. Because even if you're getting 2%, you still got to pay taxes on that. So you're really not earning anything on your money. And you know the other side of the coin there, Bob, is when you have your nest egg and you're trying to protect it is, you might be taking too much risk as well. Well, that's the biggest problem I see, right? Especially my generation. By the way, we look in the mirror every morning and we still see 18-year-olds looking back. Unfortunately, when 18-year-olds look at me, they don't look back. You know, So you know, the problem I'm seeing with most of us who are baby boomers is we're sitting there with portfolios that are very aggressive. Yes, and that's a real problem. Now, it's not a big deal if it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, but when you're in what we call that financial red zone, if you're five years out from retirement or you're retired now, you've got to start thinking about protecting the downside and you have to have those, what I would call safeguards in place that you probably don't. And that can be a real issue, especially if the market goes down again. Well, I sat down with a a, a new client this week. They came in and we sat down, we did a complete analysis. You know, we did the full total financial master plan for them. So I asked them, I said, what did your advisor tell you your risk tolerance was? Oh, it says right on the statement, Bob, we're moderately conservative. Now, let me ask you, Ry, a moderately conservative investment would have what percentage of the portfolio in stocks? I mean, no more than half, if half at all. Yeah. How about 90%? They almost fell off their stool. I said, <laughs> what do you mean 90%? Bob, how can we be 90% of our moderately conservative? I said, yeah, when's the last time you took that test? Like 30, 40 years ago? Yeah, it's such an important thing to know how all your money is invested on every platform you're on, whether it's your 401k, your brokerage account. You have to see how all that stuff is allocated together. And another big one that we're seeing all the time now, and we talked about this last week a lot, is all your retirement accounts are what we call a ticking tax time bomb. That's the worst thing about having a big booming bull market with IRAs and 401ks. If you have a lot of money now, that has got to be taxed 
when you hit 70 and a half. But you can really reduce that if you do some planning ahead of time, right? Yeah, and I'm seeing this all the time. We had a couple come in the other week that they're in their mid-60s. They're looking to retire now, um, and they don't have to start taking money out of their retirement accounts till they're 70 and a half. Well, there's a lot of planning opportunities between now and 70 and a half to start taking money out of these retirement accounts and even better, putting them into a completely tax-free account for life. We would call these yeah. Roth conversions. Yeah, I mean, a Roth conversion it can work really well especially if you retire before you're 70, before you have to touch any money in your IRA or your 401k, you can do a conversion. Now you got to pay tax on that conversion, but when you're retired, your tax bracket's pretty low, right? That's the beauty of it. And that's why it's so critical to be proactive about how you construct your portfolio, because if you do it, you can save so much money in taxes. Now more than ever, there's so many little tweaks that you can do and you probably don't know about it. And I have to say, that's probably one of the number one things we uncover when we sit down with you on a weekly basis, we find so many tax benefits that you're not utilizing. You know, right. The other thing that I see is that people have a lot of fear about the unknown, right? The fear of the future. Uh, the biggest fear is when you're getting close to that red zone in retirement, as you, as you talk about, is that you're going to run out of money and you become too conservative and you don't plan to really enjoy your life in you know, retirement. So planning is the key. Yes. Planning for every one of these issues is the key. Yeah, because it's okay to live a little too. So you need a plan that's aspirational, not just uh, you know pinching pennies so you don't run out of money. And you need to know those things. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one -on -one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free and you can download it right now by texting the word bullish that's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple, common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. 888. That's the word bullish, the 555-888. Or check out the show notes for the episode at thebullish.com. Get a clear picture of your finances. I can't see nothing. Got to open my eye. Let's get back to the show. So, Bob, we're now in the 11th year of an economic expansion, and the current U.S. bull market is now the longest ever almost 11 years old, which is just crazy. So we often hear, is the market going to finally crash? And I'm just curious, how do you respond to that question? Because we get it quite a bit. Well, before I respond to that, Ry, I got a bone to pick with you. With me? I'm yeah, perfect. every week you tell me it's the most hated bull market in history. I'm looking at my screen right now. I'm in love like you can't believe. <laughs> You're definitely in the minority because every time you turn on the TV, it's just more doom and gloom. And you're right, contrary, markets have been going higher. Yeah, they have been going higher, and that's the problem. There's a lot of people that hate this market because they're not in it, because they've been expecting you know, the next downturn or predicting and anticipating you know, the next contraction or downturn in the economy and in the stock market. And you know what, Rye? You can't invest on anticipation. That's right. And I think you see two extremes right now, which we talked in the last segment a little bit about. And that's the first one where... You're afraid to get in. We're at all-time highs. You've been sitting with all this cash year after year thinking, I want to get some money back invested, but I'm scared because the market keeps going higher. And I know the day I put my money in, that's the day the market's going to finally crash and I'm going to ruin it for everybody. <laughs> I love that cartoon. I see that in the Wall Street Journal every once in a while. But here's the point. We've had longer expansions and we've had more shallower you know, recessions. And meanwhile, in, in the downturn in the markets, they can come at any time. You know, right. It was only the last quarter of 2018, right, between October and December that we had nearly a 20 percent pullback in the stock market. And here we are today at all time record highs. Now, nobody predicted that was going to happen. But if you acted on it, you're feeling pretty foolish right now. No, that's exactly right. And then you think to yourself, well, then what do I do? Because you don't know when those market corrections are going to happen. Last time I looked, Bob, your crystal ball, my crystal ball broke you know, many years ago. <laughs> so yeah. you don't know when that crash is going to happen. So I think the key here is you always have to be protected. You always have to have what I call safeguards in your portfolio, as opposed to, you know, having too much risk or even too much in cash. 
You know, Ryan, I learned this uh, a long time ago as a young stockbroker for Merrill Lynch in downtown Philadelphia back in the late 70s. It occurred to me that there were no experts able to predict what was unpredictable and no was unknowable. And that's when I came up with a process, what we call A to B. Couldn't be any more simple than investing based on your own personal goal-based A to B strategy. Yes, as opposed to what events can happen next. And I think the other key thing to look at there too is, look, if you build a portfolio that's more pension-like, because maybe you are five years from retirement, or maybe you're retired now, you want to be less dependent on the ups and downs of the market. And the best way to do that is to generate income, Bob. So having a plan that's more what we would call pension-like, when you have a portfolio that's not relying on the ups and downs of the market, is a really critical component to building a portfolio that's going to protect you in those downturns. My God, right? That's so brilliant. I mean, you sit there and you collect your interest from your bonds until they come due, and then you buy another bond. And you sit there and collect your interest or your dividends from your stocks and wait till they go up. You don't need them to go up every month to collect your dividends. So you're earning money every single day and you don't have to worry about the ups and downs of the market because in the long run, it always goes higher. That's right. And the other thing is, I'm willing to bet that if you have your money sitting in cash right now and that 2% you're earning is not enough to cover your expenses <laughs> when you're retired. And then you have to pay taxes on that 2% too, which is even worse. So what you have to start to look at is, what am I going to need to live on if I'm retired now or I'm planning to retire? And what kind of income is my portfolio generating? And make sure those two match. And odds are, from the portfolios we analyze, you're probably not generating enough income to supplement your lifestyle. Now, we find a lot of you are not generating the income you need. Net of inflation, net of taxation, because you don't have a tax-efficient portfolio. You're paying more in taxes than necessary. And you're in, in investments that don't generate the income you need because a lot of your fees are eating up that income generation. You know, Ryan, I think the greatest thing that you can do as an investor is a wealth projection, right? See what it looks like, you know, based on where you are today, based on what happened in the past. So you can see what it looks like every year for the rest of your life. It makes decision making so much easier. No, that's exactly right. Because if you line up your portfolio with your goals, invariably, you're going to figure out how to generate the income that you need on your portfolio. But you also want to make sure you're protected when the market goes down. You made the joke last week, Bob, when the tide goes out, you can see who's been swimming naked. And the problem is when the market's going up and up and up and you see your portfolio going up, you're thinking it ain't broke. I'm not going to fix it. And that's a really bad strategy. Hey, Ryan, I was just at a 50th reunion in my high school. And I'll tell you what, I don't want to see any of them naked. So, you know, let's make sure these people have the right portfolio so we don't have to uh, have anybody be in the wrong position when the tide goes out. And the problem is you have no idea what risk you actually have in your portfolio because you probably have a lot of different accounts. There are different places with different brokers. And the old school view was, well, I'm diversified. I got money everywhere. But Bob, what we find is most of those advisors are putting your money in the same place and you don't even know it. No, you don't know it, Ryan. That's why you, know, you go to the doctor every year, you get a stress test to see if your heart's in good shape, your body's in good shape. You want to do the same thing with your investment strategy, with your financial plan. Put it through a stress test. Don't find out after the fact, right? You want to know beforehand that you have enough income, that you're not over-concentrated, and you're not going to lose half your money if we have another 2008 like we did back in 2008. Exactly right, Bob. Only the paranoid survive. So when things are going well, this is the best time to analyze what kind of underlying risk you can't see in your portfolio and make sure you're fully protected. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our total financial master plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so there's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844 752 6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844 752 6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. And now we have a very special guest on the show, my colleague, Bob's colleague, Jen. 
financial angel in the midst of getting her CFA, Certified Financial Analyst uh, License. Or yep. Is, close is it, enough. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jen, great to have you One on the show. One hard test. That's all I know. Yeah, hard test. Um, hey, guys. How are we? No complaints on this uh, glorious weekend now that we have Jen Angel here, like all problems are solved. Exactly. Here to help. <laughs> I love it, Jen. And this is our spotlight segment. Every week what we do is we take a real retirement case and we point out the flaws or pain points that a specific couple has with their retirement planning. And you worked on a case recently. Why don't you give us the rundown on how you helped this couple get on their path to financial freedom? Sure. So this couple came in mid-50s, planning on potentially fully retiring in about four or five years, they think. And they'd never really sat down to do a full financial plan. So that was kind of the first thing. And when we they brought in all their statements, brought in everything, and they had over 16 different accounts. Wow. It's oh, overwhelming. It's <laughs> very overwhelming. So, and they were fantastic savers. They've always contributed to a retirement accounts since they started working. So, you know, they built up this bulk, but had never actually looked at all the numbers and figure out what is in each account, where is everything. And I mean, just that gives me anxiety right there. <laughs> Where's all your stuff? So that was a big one. And I saw you did this. You put this all into the financial portal for them. You were able to look at all their accounts, how all their money's managed at different places and really get a bird's eye view of everything. And what were some of the things that you found out? I mean, because there was a lot of things going on there. I remember I sat in the meeting. Yeah. So lots going on. I mean, some of their goals were just to make sure that their money lasts. That's a big one. And definitely they have two kids. So they wanted to see, okay, uh, you know, two kids in college. Can I help them out with potentially grad school or can I maybe buy a new home if they leave the New York area and, you know, maybe my kid goes somewhere else and you want to have the flexibility. So looking at what their options were, making sure they have the financial optionality to do all these different things they want to do in their 60s and 70s. So that was a one thing to look at is do they have the financial resources to do those things? And then where should the money come from? It's a big one as well because they have a lot in retirement assets so it's putting that tax plan together for the best way to take the, that out when they hit 60. Yeah, they had that proverbial ticking tax time bomb because at 70 and a half, they have to start taking that money. And I remember you recommended in the meeting, well, you don't have to start taking this money for five years, but now that you're in a low tax bracket, it might be a good time to take some of that and put it into a tax-free account, like a Roth account, which I thought was a great strategy. Save on those taxes. Hey, Jen, you know what I love about the 360 financial portal? You were able to model all those what if scenarios in real time with them. And you could have done it whether they were at home with you online or you're sitting with you in the office in New York. So the beauty of that tool is it's not static. It's real. It's ongoing. It's a living, breathing, working strategy. And that's, I think, something everybody needs to have a 360 financial portal. Yeah, absolutely. So and even in the meeting, they said, hey, you know, what if we don't buy a second property? What if, you know, my kid goes to grad school so you can do all those what ifs, you know, right there, which is amazing. And then when we looked at their actual portfolio, you know, put in all those 16 different accounts, actually get a actually get a bird's eye view of everything. You know, they were shocked to see the expenses in each portfolio. Some of their biggest ones had the highest expenses. And, you know, he, he said, you know, I, I was surprised that you know, Mark has been going straight up and my portfolio hasn't been. And we said, you hmm. know, it's because you're paying almost 2% in fees in this one account. Yes. He was like completely wow. surprised, but he didn't know because you can't see the fees coming out. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And that derails yeah, performance. Just think about how time. owners it is every month to open up 16 statements, lay them side by side and try and figure out if I'm diversified properly, what my costs are. And, and you know, those statements don't have the information you really need. No. And they just have a monthly number and, you know, you're supposed to figure it out from there, which is... Not easy. <laughs> well, that's the other nice thing. No, too, not at all. Just we talk about being less reliant on the markets and more reliant on income. You're able to increase the income on this portfolio significantly. Yeah. So over 75000 a year, which means they have more flexibility to give their kids more money for grad school, to travel a little bit more in retirement, to do all the things that they want the flexibility to do just by changing their allocation to our more diversified, you know, higher income producing portfolio. Well, I don't know anyone who doesn't benefit from having an extra 75000 to either give to your children or spend on lifestyle. It sounds good to me. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. 
We call it our total financial master plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so it's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844 752 6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844 752 6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting BeBullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, Be Bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.